It's the latest policy decision from the Bank of England on interest rates and quantitative easing. There you have it. Uh, the Bank of England keeps its base rate on hold at a record low of half of 1% where it's been since March 2009. And on the quantitative easing front, uh, it also keeps policy steady, leaving the QE total at £375 billion. Both these moves, or lack of moves rather, firmly in line with expectations. Well, for his view and reaction, let's get straight out now to David Tinsley. He's Chief UK Economist at BNP Paribas. Well, well, and David, no surprises uh, on the QE or the rates, but uh, do you think the bank will ease further in the new year? And if so, when? Well, I think its preferred approach from now on is to ease, if you like, via the funding for lending scheme. I mean, there are some initial signs that that's successful uh, in the data that was published this week's very early days. I don't think they'll do more QE because I think that the inflation outlook is proving a little bit stickier than they were expecting, and that will keep them on hold in, with regard to that. So no more QE then? Yeah, no more QE. That's our central call. I mean, there's obviously clearly a chance. We've, we've seen some fairly dovish talk from MPC members of late. They might come back to it. I don't think they'll do so before May or so next year, though. We're going to get a weak GDP print. That's baked in the cake for Q4, just because of the, uh, the correction from some of the Olympic boost in Q3. Uh, but I don't think they'll be able to see through that sufficiently to know what the underlying position is in February. So I think they'll wait until near May before they come back, if they do any more at all. Isn't it, isn't it the case, though, that, um, as we heard from the Chancellor and the OBR yesterday, the growth outlook is pretty grim. Uh, our main trading partner, uh, the Eurozone, is looking pretty grim there as well. And um, the, the latest rhetoric from some of the Bank of England hawks, if you like, has become a little more dovish. I think that is right, yes. I've been surprised of late by some of uh, the NPC members, such as Broadbent making, uh, and Fisher, making fairly dovish sounds. Uh, I think, though, the major problem in the UK is bank lending, and the most effective way of addressing that is through schemes, credit easing schemes, really, such as the FLS. So I think that should be and probably will be the way that the route they take. What about the UK's AAA rating? I mean, there's a lot of speculation in the press um, that it may be stripped by one, of the or one or more of the major ratings agencies in the next few months. Uh, do you think that will happen? And even if it does, does it matter? Well, I think it's, it's looking increasingly likely that uh, one of the two that's put a, got us on, currently got us on negative outlook will go for the uh, downgrade. I mean, when you step back and think of all these advanced Western economies with spiralling healthcare costs and pension costs, none of them probably really deserve to be AAA. And really, it's the sequencing that, uh, that re really matters in terms of who goes first, etc. So I think, yes, the, the, the reduction in trend growth in the, in the UK is probably enough to tip some of them over the edge and downgrade. Does it matter? Well, maybe at the margin, but you do have to remember that the UK has a pretty solid characteristics in terms of its bond market, very long maturity of debt, very large proportion of it held domestically. So I don't see a big spike up in yields if, we go, if we're downgraded by a notch or so. I mean, the Japanese example is, is an obvious one where they were downgraded. Look at the bond yields today. So I don't think it's a major concern. OK, finally, David, I'm talking of bond yields. We're around about 1.77, 1.76%, pretty low and cable steady, about 161, just over 161. Where do you see the pound and gilts are going into the end of the year? Well, regarding the currency, I mean, we're, we're pretty bullish on the currency, particularly against, uh, well, particularly against the euro and also against the dollar. I mean, increasingly, the UK's meagre growth, but nonetheless positive growth, is going to look pretty good against the eurozone's stagnant economy in 2013, and that will help uh, the currency. Uh, regarding yields, well, they'll probably drift higher a bit over the course of next year as uh, the recovery, albeit a tentative one, takes hold. OK, David, thank you very much. Today's chart point looks at the 10-year French yield, anchored near a record low of just under 2%. Paris today selling almost €4 billion Euros of bonds, the first auction since Moody's stripped France of its AAA credit rating last month. Investor demand was strong despite that, and despite the 10-year yield being at that record low going into the sale. And before we go, a quick stock check. Shares in EADS up more than 7.5% today after the company's main shareholders cut a deal to overhaul its ownership structure. The new agreement means France and Germany will control 12% voting rights each and Spain will have a reduced stake of 4%.
analysts welcome the news, saying this will put most of EADS shares beyond state control. That's all from us for now, but join us every day at this time to take the pulse of the market. I'm Jamie McGeever, this is Reuters.